my friends, what is going on? This is Zeph from Z Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. What's that? You're not having an awesome day. If we can pretend to have an awesome day. You know, they've actually, actually scientifically proven the placebo effect is very powerful. So if you move your muscles like you pretend you're smiling and you have all the facial expressions like you're smiling but you're not actually smiling and happy, then it actually forces you to be happy. Mind you, if I walk down the street and pretending to be really, really happy, people think I'm some axe murderer. I have one of those faces. But anyway, friends, what is going on? It's been a while, huh? So at the base camp, we've had a few weeks of very, very heavy storms, um, really heavy winds. Uh, if you're in the UK, you'll know what I'm talking about. So I spent a good chunk of today actually cleaning up the whole base camp. There's a lot of deadfall. It's just the camp was a complete mess. Uh, and it's very quickly how much it becomes a mess with the moment there's a bit of wind that arrives. So I didn't really bother filming that. It's not the most exciting thing to watch uh, when it comes to tidying up. So today was about really getting the base camp into order. You see, I'm starting to get into a position now where I'm going to be here quite regularly. So I've got a lot of cool projects planned here. And I just had a few kind of like teething things to sort out at this base camp. So let me talk you through and show you exactly what I've done. So as you can see, I put in a load of dowels dotted around the actual structure itself. Um, there are some of the dowels that I left from before from the actual build itself that I've left. But what I needed, the kind of more I spent time in here, the more I realized I needed specific dowels to hang my kit up. So obviously I've made the dowels here. Uh, and you can see it just off camera here, just down here. And so the angle is kind of just right and also the height as well. Now obviously if I need to kind of add more dowels, it's no big deal, right? So with my trusty uh, bit and brace, or brace and bit, depending on how you want to refer to it, um, I just kind of use that to bore the holes. It's something I've used before, so I know the, diam the diameter is just perfect. Uh, carve some dowels, and then obviously this is kind of the quite, quite sturdy dowels is. So obviously you're not going to put anything extremely heavy on here, but you'd be surprised how much kind of weight these can hold. So like I said, I've dotted these around the kind of structure itself. Obviously, as I move forward, if I need to kind of add some more on, then obviously I can do that at a whim. So I've kind of put this on mainly for the pack, just to hang the pack up. Now I was going to actually have it as more of an angle, but the more I thought about it, the more kind of like I think that when the rain comes, if I kind of have it jutting out, then obviously the rain is going to catch this. So sometimes the rain can be quite heavy in the UK. So by kind of having it sideways right inside the shelter itself, Hopefully, fingers crossed, no matter how much torrential downpour that we get, obviously the key thing being that is everything I've kept within the shelter, I want to keep dry. So there you go. Proper Dow City, man. The other thing that I did is I treated myself to a couple of storm lanterns or hurricane lanterns. These are made by Fjordhund. Fjordhund? I'm sure that's the correct pronunciation. It's a German make. These have been around, I think, for over 100 years, a very, very long time. I think these are the original ones or one of the original kind of design lanterns. Uh, there's a lot of copies out there, a lot of cheap ones out there that you typically want to avoid. Uh, they come in different colors. I'm trying to remember which one this is. I think this is the gunmetal one, I believe. Um, but they come in a whole myriad of colors. Um, so in terms of pronunciation, actually, the German... Uh, speaking friends that are watching uh, this video can actually correct me on the pronunciation. I'm sure I butchered that up completely. But these are kind of one of the original ones. So I first came across these quite a while ago when I first started out in bushcraft. I'll be honest with you, I kind of dismissed these. I thought they're not really that great. Um, and this is obviously before actually trying them. Then a while ago, I was with my buddy Paul Adamson when we filmed the Cooks are Carving tutorial, which has been quite a well-received video. And I'll tell you what, he had two of them that we used at camp. And my God, they made a massive difference, you know, they kick out quite a bit of light. And obviously these are not designed to use internally inside a tent or inside a shelter in terms of something that's sealed. Because obviously because of the paraffin that it burns, obviously it's very dangerous. So it's got to be used in an open environment. Um, so in terms of heat, you're not really going to be getting any heat from this. Um, but the one thing you are going to get is obviously a lot of good light. And obviously it's ambient light. It's not like a real harsh light. But I'll tell you what, you have two of these kind of kicking off at night time when it's pitch black. And I, yeah, they really kick out a really good amount of light. A full tank on these lasts a very long time, I think between 12 to 14 hours. And obviously you can kind of control um, the, the wick. So obviously you can kind of adjust the amount of light that you give. It can give you a really dim light all the way to something quite bright. You want to be careful the amount of uh, light that you do give off. Because obviously if it's too bright, then it can 
uh, soot up the inside of the glass. Um, and these are really, really high quality. They're not that heavy. They're not really useful in terms of obviously lightweight camping, you know, but for some something like this, which is kind of a, a more of a fixed base camp, then these are fantastic. Now it's a bit of a shame, obviously it's still light now, uh, otherwise I would have lit these up, but I wanted to kind of get the dowels up specifically for these. Um, and so I can't wait, obviously, as it starts to get dark now, uh, and obviously I start doing wild camps to actually get these lit up. So I'd like you to meet 32 gigabyte. <laughs> Do you get it? 32 gigabyte RAM. It's a RAM. <sighs> okay. Listen, it's been a while, I know, and my jokes are a little bit rusty, but just give me an opportunity here to warm up a little bit, okay? I'm really out of touch with my jokes. I thought that was quite funny. 32 gigabyte RAM. Obviously not. Right, so no uh, base camp is complete without some kind of skull. I'm trying to find a human skull. I wasn't successful. So I tried to find a ram's head skull because it just looks really cool. I'm just being honest there. Man, they are so difficult to get hold of. So this is actually a resin one. This is not actually a real ram's head, even though it looks the part. It's quite cheap as well, this. Um, but yeah, the ram's head was really difficult to find. I did find one seller. I think it was on eBay. Man, the bloke wanted like 300 quid. I thought, flipping it, I could buy a real ram for 300 quid. So yeah, so it was really expensive. So I am on the lookout for a real ram's head. Up until then, I've got Mr. 32 gigabyte here. And I'm just being honest, it just looks really cool at a base camp. I was actually gonna hang it up from the shelter, but it didn't look great. But I put it on the uh, fire reflector over here. And I think Mr. 32 gigabyte over here looks all right. What do you reckon? No? Okay, fair enough. So I am gonna get a celebratory tea on. I've got everything ready to go. Man, last time I wanted to make the tea, it got too dark to make one. I was really gutted. So I want to make sure now I'll end this video by making a celebratory tea. My first one at the new fire pit. So one quick thing I want to talk about before we get on to that. I want to talk about e-tools, uh, entrenching tools, shovels, spades, whatever you want to call it. Okay, the military ones. Now, if you recall from one of my previous videos, uh, when I was using this, I bought this off Amazon. And long story short, I got sold as an original, I think it was NATO Army, uh, issue uh, ETL and when I got it I didn't think it was original okay um, so there's no insignia no nothing it did the job but I knew it wasn't, wasn't original so I wasn't too happy with the buyer and I let him know that as well so I did put out a, uh, a bit of a request to you guys to kind of let me know what it is I should be looking for etc and I cannot thank you guys enough you really helped me out I know there's a lot of you guys that are former military even some of you that are currently uh, serving in the military across here in the UK uh, also in the US and in mainland Europe as well so as a result I got told that yeah this is not an original one now there's still a little bit of ambiguity because what a couple of guys did say is that some of the manufacturers uh, do produce the civilian version as well so essentially it's the same one but just done in a civilian packaging um, so there is a little bit of kind of like uh, um, there's not 100% certainty this is not original but I'm pretty sure this isn't I know the sheath as well is a bit cheaply made so I'm pretty sure this is not an original NATO army ETL however this is an original army ETL this is actually the Dutch army ETL so with this one, this was very kindly, unexpectedly sent to me by a dear friend of mine called Mardi, uh, who's Dutch um, and actually from Amsterdam. And he served many years ago in the Dutch military. So he knows his stuff. And he actually sources, this is in, I think this is in unused condition. This is in absolutely mint condition. And when you compare it to the one that I bought, which is basically the copy, uh, you can tell the difference. The one thing you can tell is this is a slightly larger eater with a slightly larger pouch. Uh, and I prefer it, uh, the larger ones. <laughs> That's what she said. Behave. Right, so the one thing you notice with this, and I actually take it out, is if you can see, it's got the insignia on there, okay, with the code. So that's one of the first giveaways, all right? I knew it had, had to have some kind of marking. Now, the one thing I did get told is that on the original e-tools, you do have, I believe... And you guys can correct me if I'm mistaken here. I believe it was a 15-digit code. Um, then what you also have is 
uh, for a lot of them you have, not all of them, but for some of them you have the insignia, the actual logo for whatever country it is. And once again, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong here. I know one gentleman told me who was former British Army that the British Army one is a crow's foot, I think it is, that's got the stamp on there. So either way, it's got to have the 15 digit, I think it's a NATO number. Um, and that has that on there, but it also, for a lot of them, it has the insignia as well, depending on what com uh, country it's from. So this one here, so there you go. Can you see? So that's the code there for the Dutch Army one. And the one thing I noticed with this, and it's not just a mi uh, mindset thing, I actually know this is a lot sturdier than the other one that I bought. And when it tightens up, this is like rock solid. The other one had a slight rattle in it. Um, and so obviously I know with the kind of army issue stuff, typically they're very, very strong, very, very resilient. Um, so yeah, so that was my E2 saga. But I just want to thank all of you guys out there that gave me a lot of information. I knew that wasn't instinctively an original one that I had bought um, and that the original ones obviously do have some kind of markings on them. So you've got to be very careful when you're buying online. But I did buy it from a reputable seller, but obviously I still got done over. Uh, but I did kind of put that through as a dispute on Amazon. Uh, but... On top of all of that, like I said, I do want to give a shout out to my buddy Mardi. He's got a great channel also, and I put a link on the screen now. Uh, and a sincere thank you to him uh, for actually unexpectedly sending this to me. So I'm really looking forward to getting a lot of use out of this. The Dutch Army stuff is really good, you know. Uh, I've not had a huge amount of experience with loads of the kit, but I have used some of the kit. Um, and I know a lot of guys that do know this stuff when it comes to Army surplus. And the Dutch Army stuff is pretty cool. So there you go. The E2 saga over, and I finally have an original NATO Army E2. What is going on people? Right, the trivet, remember I showed you on the previous video, got a hold of a trivet, got a single one as well, but I'm going to use this bad boy here, the three horseshoe one. Now when the blacksmith made it, he actually put a bit of protective paint on it, some black ones, obviously that's got to be burnt off a little bit. The one beautiful thing with this wooden, it is so much dead for, so much for days bruv, bruv for days bruv. So much dead for, so much hardwood as well, so I'm burning a bit of oak as the kind of base and there's just so much of it man I'm very thankful oak one of the best woods you can burn so let's get this on the fire let's get the kettle on So, to have our celebratory tea, 
we're going to have this cookster that was made by a dear friend of mine, Paul Adamson. I think you've seen this in quite a few videos now. This is made from birch bowl or hand carved. He's even done the antler. If you can see, there you go, some my logo. Scrimshaw work on there. I believe that's red, red deer antler. So that's what we're going to have the tea in. And to stir it, we're going to use this spoon that I haven't christened yet actually. It's by my dear friend of mine, Dan Lawrence. Very talented uh, British based uh, green woodworker. Does some incredible work all around. Now he's known for these bird finials. So if you can see it, it's actually carved 3D. And these are incredible the way he does these. Real intricate work going into these. And this, I believe, is carved out of cherry. Uh, so I know Dan quite well as well as well as uh, Paul Adamson. Both great guys, both very talented. So this is what I'm going to have my celebratory tea with. So at the moment, I'm keeping my brew kit in the Hidden Woodsman pouch. Incredible work as always from Malcolm. And now that we've got a permanent base camp, no more powdered milk and the tea militia giving me a nightmare about mixing the milk in first with the uh, before the tea bag. We've got some real milk people, look at that, in a fancy little kilner bottle as well. I'll tell you what, I'm pulling out all the strings there for you lot. It's got this fancy little kilner bottle and this is actually real milk. It's, um, it's breast milk. It's from my own breasts. It's a survival hack. I'll teach you in a future video, but you guys aren't on that level yet. You see, I'm far above you guys. So when you guys are ready, when me, the guru, Guru Zed, this high you lot are ready and worthy, then I'll show you how I pump them out my breasts to have this. So there you go, man. Higher protein content than casein, cow's milk. Zed breast milk. Birds are really active as the sun's setting. Very romantic. Anyway, just me and you. So, here we go, man. We've got the tea made. So, this is the first tea that's made on the new fire pit with a shelter pretty much almost complete. Obviously, I've got a, a few things that I'm going to be building out here now over the coming weeks. So, I hope you enjoyed that. So, let's indulge in this tea. Before I do that, I want to kind of give a shout out to those of you who for whatever reason I'm not able to get out. I know there's a lot of you suffering from ill health, from mental health, from uh, a lot of family issues, fi uh, financial issues and so forth. So whatever your reason is that you're not able to get out, I guess when all of us go out, we're kind of like holding the flag for each other. So today I'm holding that flag for you, having this tea in your name. Cheers. Oh, it's so good, man. Oh, it's so good, especially when you're using real milk. So there you go, my friends. I'm going to finish this tea, enjoy the last of the sunset, get packed up and go home. Like I said, I will be coming here a lot more frequently now to do a lot more stuff on the base camp. I know I've been very sketchy in terms of my videos to do with the base camp and the bushcraft side of things in general. Uh, but you will be seeing a lot more of that moving forward. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, I really do appreciate you watching. I really do mean that. And as always, I will see you on the next instalment of Z Outdoors. So until then... I hope whatever you're doing, you have a blessed day, a blessed week ahead. This is Zeph from Dead Outdoors. Peace out.